Recording in progress. Philippine Daily Inquirer would like to thank the following sponsors for making this live stream event possible. Coca-Cola Beverages Philippines Inc. Glow. Maya. It's everything in a bank. Medicard. Prescribed by doctors. Mount Grace Hospitals Inc. Better access to better health. SB Finance. Dito puede. Union Bank. It's all in you. We'd also like to acknowledge the organizations that have partnered with us. Thank you to... We'd also like to thank 
Inquire.net, Mega Mobile, and Inquire Academy. I need a new TV and a ref na wagas. Woo! I need a motor for our quick errand. But we short on funds, walang malapitan. Oh, SP, sa SP Finance, meron ka ng Suki. The Suki app, maaasahan. Paperless, cost digital yan. Choose from personal loan, motorcycle, hulugan. Car for cash isang tap lang yan. Now you can get any loan you need with just one app. Zuki by SB Finance. Tap personal loan to grow your business. Car for cash loan using your cars ORCR. Motor sick loan for motorcycles. And Hooligan for easy installment. Low interest rate and processing fee. Oh, SB, SB Finance. SB Finance. Dito, pwede. They don't just let us see. They allow us to perceive, to believe, to find beauty or weirdness in anything we set our sight on. So here I am, looking after what I value the most. My vision. Quality care for my eye care. From an institution that has served for over 30 years through innovative programs and services, Medicard Eye Clinic. That's what they're here for. Globe has truly gone beyond Telco. We innovate to uplift the lives of Filipinos with compassion, care, and kindness. Driven by our vision and purpose, we address problems of our customers in an inclusive manner that impacts the whole country. We bring together customer-centric innovations into a frictionless digital ecosystem built on a reliable network and supported by genuine caring for our customers. We see this in life-enabling and life-sustaining solutions in education, health, finance, leisure productivity, business, and digital readiness and security that empower people to live healthier, safer, and richer lives in a progressive digital nation. So, today, we are more than a telco. We are a digital solutions platform. We are the Globe Group.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Inquirer Project Rebound webinar series presented by the Philippine Daily Inquirer. My name is Ruel De Vera, Arts and Books Editor from Inquirer Lifestyle. The Philippine Daily Inquirer and its sister companies introduced this campaign last year, prompted by the desire to share, inspire, and empower Filipinos. Now in its second year, we are leveling up and drilling down on fact on key sectors that will be crucial to the Philippines' continued recovery from the twin public health and economic crisis wrought by the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's watch this. As COVID-19 cases remain manageable and economic activity in the country continues to increase, most micro, small, and medium scale enterprises have seen their profits return to pre-pandemic levels. For the third and final part of our MSME series, we have invited experts to share knowledge on digital payment options and financial technology. Our distinguished guests will be glad to answer all your questions, so post your questions and our feedback in the comment section of this webinar's live stream or in the Project Rebound or Inquirer.net pages. Before we introduce our guests, we would like to give an exclusive offer to our viewers. We would like to inform our viewers that your most trusted newspaper 
digital version, Inquirer Plus has a special promo for you. Get a huge discount on any of the annual plans for Inquirer Plus when you subscribe today. To avail of the promo, go to inquirer to inq.news slash rebound promo and use the code Project Rebound. Our keynote speaker is the Secretary of the Department of Finance. Dr. Jokno is the current Secretary of the Department of Finance or DOF. Prior to his appointment as Fiscal Chief, he served as the Governor of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP from 2019 to 2022. Under his leadership, the Philippine Central Bank was among the first to respond to the pandemic and deploy decisive measures to cushion the adverse impact of the pandemic and pave the road to recovery. Before taking charge of monetary affairs, he served as budget secretary under three presidents, where he pursued an expansionary fiscal policy to finance investments in human capital development and public infrastructure. As finance secretary, Secretary Jokno seeks to rally the economic team to achieve three broad development goals by 2028. Reduce the deficit to GDP ratio to pre-pandemic rates, bring down poverty incidence to single digit, and achieve upper middle income econom econ economy status by the end of the Marcos administration. Secretary Jokno seeks to go beyond headline economic expansion and achieve a brand of inclusive and sustainable growth with equity. Good afternoon, Secretary Jokna. First of all, I commend the Philippine Daily Inquirer for spearheading Project Rebound. This is a platform that has brought forth inspiring stories of resilience, recovery, and innovation among the business community. These stories contribute the wealth of best practices we can learn from as we make our way towards a sustainable and more inclusive economic growth. The pandemic accelerated most of the developments already underway in the digital space. At the height of mobility restrictions, Enterprises explored new digital approaches to keep their heads above water. Specifically, the rapid adoption of digital payments has facilitated the growth of e-commerce and propelled the shift to a more cash light economy. Not only did innovative businesses survive, but they emerged stronger and took part in shaping the new economy we see unfolding today. Digitalization paves the way for greater financial inclusion among our people. Increased participation in the formal financial system is critical in deepening our financial and capital markets, growing consumer confidence, and extending products and services to previously underserved markets. Therefore, building a more robust digital finance infrastructure is critical for broad-based economic growth. To strengthen the pillars of support for the digital economy, the Marcos administration is committed to establishing the right policy environment to pursue technological innovations that build new industries, enhance public service delivery, and create employment and investment opportunities. The President's eight-point socio-economic agenda underscores this commitment through the expansion of the country's digital infrastructure and promotion of research and development as well as innovation over the medium term. We will accelerate the rollout of the Philippine Identification System to bring us closer to the goal of achieving e-governance and expanding access to financial products and services among our people. We will shore up 
trust in digital finance to promote its wide adoption and secure use. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas supported the passage of the recently enacted Financial Products and Services Consumer Protection Act. This strengthens the BSP's ability to address cybersecurity concerns and enhance consumer safety within the digital financial system. These policy efforts are aligned with the BSP's goals to digitize half of all retail payments and onboard 70% of Filipino adults to the formal financial system by 2023. Stronger consumer preference for digital payments will certainly help our micro, small, and medium enterprises tap into new markets, expand their distribution channels, and streamline their transaction systems. Tax administration and policy also have an important part to play in supporting the digitalization of our government systems and promoting a regime that rewards innovation. The Bureau of Internal Revenue and the Bureau of Customs are fast-tracking the full digitalization of our revenue systems to increase our tax effort. In recent years, taxpayers have been shifting to online payment channels, making it easier, safer, and less burdensome for individuals and businesses to transact with our revenue agencies. The government will also take advantage of existing game-changing reforms to widen the space for investments that are consistent with the fourth industrial revolution. The Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises Act provides a generous menu of incentives for businesses that pursue research and development and innovation in the Philippines especially in the countryside. Meanwhile, the recently enacted economic liberalization reforms open opportunities for investments in and joint venture opportunities for enterprises employing advanced technologies. Clearly, the Philippines is prepared to ride a digital wave, transform our processes according to what fintech makes possible, and participate in the new global economy. I ask you to continue working with us in further harnessing the wide constellation of digital business solutions in order to build a more sustainable, inclusive, and digitally enabled future. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Jokno, for that overview on MSMEs. Today's discussion will highlight the financial technology and financial inclusion for MSMEs. Before anything else, let's get to know our panelists. Our first panelist is the CEO of Artificial Intelligence Incorporated. Carlo Almendral is a serial entrepreneur who had previously started venture-backed companies in games, fintech, e-commerce, education, and data science. In Carlos' philanthropic work, he is a founding member of the Innovation Council for the United Nations World Food Program, served on the Board of Governors for the Commonwealth Club, and is a founding member of the For the Women Foundation a school that teaches women with financial needs in Manila, data science, and machine learning for free. Carlo taught data science at the University of California at Berkeley and social entrepreneurship at San Francisco State University and the University of San Francisco. Good afternoon, Carlo. Good afternoon. Thank you for the warm introduction, and thanks for having me here. Would you like to uh, give us a short message and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, AI? Sure. Um, so our company, we think of ourselves as trying to build the future of the future. What that means is that you know, artificial intelligence 
probably 100% certainty is going to change the economy in the Philippines. Um, you know, it's not just going to be call centers getting automated. It's a lot of things getting automated. We want to make sure that people um, benefit from it because it's one thing for people to have access to technology. It's another completely different thing for people to have access to uh, access to technology and also benefit from it. So we want to make sure we have tools for the Philippines and for Filipinos to benefit from artificial intelligence. Thank you, Carlo. Moving on to our next panelist. Mary Day Hanna Ramos is a magna cum laude graduate of AV in mass communication class of 2013. She worked for three years to gain knowledge in sales and marketing before starting her own business at the age of 23. She is the founder and owner of Chismosa, the first and only mozzarella sticks food stand in the Philippines. And after six years, she's able to expand and open more than 50 branches in Metro Manila, North, South, and Luzon. She was the grand winner of the Philippine Franchise Association's Next Gen in Franchising 2020, a competition that recognizes young entrepreneurs aged 35 and below who can disrupt and open new opportunities for Philippine franchising. It is a nationwide competition that searches for the most innovative and highly franchisable concepts with the potential to expand overseas. Good afternoon, Hannah. Good afternoon, Sir Ruel. Thank you for that introduction. Would you like to tell us a little bit about Chismosa, please? Yeah, um, so Chismosa is actually the first to offer fried mozzarella cheese food stands um, in food carts because before they were just available in restaurants. And now, as mentioned, uh, we have um, more than 50 branches. And because of our witty and catchy brand name, um, I believe that Chismosa can um, become not just a brand, but also a household name. Um, some, some would even call Chismosa um, instead of calling it mozzarella sticks. So um, we've been in the business for more than six years now. Okay. Thank you very much, Hannah. Moving Thank on you. to our next panelist, who is also our guest speaker, is Abby Casanova. Over 25 years of consumer banking experience is what she has. Abby has extensive exposure in the various areas of the credit cycle for consumer finance, small business loans, and credit cards. She has successfully managed and scaled various secured and unsecured consumer and small business loans portfolios. She has held senior positions in multinational and domestic banks like Citibank, GE Money, BDO, and Security Bank. She earned a master's level postgraduate diploma in global business at the University of Oxford and graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in business economics cum laude from the University of the Philippines. She's also a certified Six Sigma black belt. Good afternoon, Abby. Hi, good afternoon, Rui. Thank you for that introduction and thank you, um, Philippine Daily Inquirer, for having me here. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. So um, SB Finance is one of the newest financing company in the market. Uh, we are a joint venture of Security Bank and Banco Fayudia. So we cater to, you know, being, we want to be the launch pad to achieve the dreams of our of our average Filipinos, you know, whether it is it is to buy a motorcycle or you know upgrade gadgets or expand the business. So we'd like to be there to finance. But more than that, we also want to give informed decisions to our clients and to our borrowers. So that's SB Finance. Thank you, Abby. Next up is Jovelin Howe. With over a decade of experience in technology risk supervision, Jovi brings in key insights and valuable inputs as she leads the FinTech in Innovation and Policy Research Group, or FIPRG, under the Technology Risk and Innovation Supervision Department, PRISG. FIPRG serves as the primary contact for fintech players in the Philippines, primarily those with underlying BSP-regulated activities. I'm sure Jovi will explain all of those acronyms to you later. Jovi is likewise heavily involved in various policy initiatives of the BSP, such as the recently 
issued amendments for the regulations of the outsourcing, as well as ongoing initiatives on open finance framework and regulatory sandbox framework. Prior to her current role, she was also a pioneer member of the Cybersecurity Supervision and Oversight Group, or CSOG. Good afternoon, Jovi. Hi, good afternoon, Rui, and good afternoon to all the viewers um, this afternoon no, joining us uh, online. So first off, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers, uh, especially PDI, for inviting the BSP here. Um, seeing all the panelists, no, it's such a great mix of panelists because uh, there's representation from, from the MSF ME sector, of course, and then we have those supporting the MSMEs and uh, for me naman, I represent the financial uh, regulatory bodies. So, um, medyo mouthful lang yung mga, yung mga groups namin. But basically, um, for, for our group, um, we are the ones uh, directly engaging with the fintech companies. So, yung mga, um, usually mga startups, um, those who are offering financial services, um, and then uh, we, we guide them, we give them um, the necessary assistance uh, in terms of how, do they how they should comply or how do they go about the, the regulatory requirements. Um, because of course, at the end of the day, um, even if we work closely with these uh, fintech companies, uh, our, our um, end goal pa rin is still uh, consumer protection. So we're assisting these institutions with the end goal of uh, providing a safe and secure um, financial ecosystem to, to our uh, public or end consumers. Thank you very much, Jovi. And now the one and only Salve Duplito. Salve Duplito is the founder and president of Empower and Transform, a young company composed of, dynam of a dynamic team that has the expertise and experience in using COVID-induced massive movement of activities from education and entertainment to work and business for the advancement of financial education for Filipinos here and overseas. Salve is also the resident financial advisor of On The Money, a personal financial aired on the ABS-CBN News Channel or ANC, where she has a regular segment called Salve Says. As a financial literacy advocate, Salve has pushed for more than two decades for a cultural revolution on how people should handle their finances and use, use debt wisely. Before joining the media, Salve worked as a communications consultant and writer for organizations such as the World Bank, the USAID, and the Asian Development Bank. She also worked for two decades as a financial journalist for publications such as the Philippine Daily Inquirer, the Inquirer Interactive, and Business World, winning prestigious awards for her articles. Good afternoon, Salve. Hi, Rui. Grabe, naiyak ako dun sa the one and only. <laughs> Thank you so much for the warm welcome. This is such a fun, I think, very enlightening panel. I, I'm very honored to be part of this panel kasi parang magkakaedad lang kami. <laughs> diba? Kasama si Rui to na, magkakaedad lang tayo. Before I start, siguro diretso na ako. I know you're, you're gonna ask me about my company. Maghe-hello lang po ako sa mga salvenatics na nandyan sa baba na nakikinig. Kahit saan man ako sa social media, nakikinig sila. Thank you, Dayang, for being here. I think Waki is also uh, somebody, a new player in the fintech industry is also watching. I'd like to say uh, thank you guys for watching today. And please share this stream with everybody you know para dumami ang fans ni Rui Lalo at hindi siya. At maraming mag -ano sa kanya pag may nababash. <laughs> may ganun talaga. Anyway, so I'd like to tell you a little bit more about my company. Yung introduction ko, Rui, kanina parang ano na outdated na kasi three decades na pala ako. Tanda. 
<laughs> Matanda na. But financial education really is the passion of my life. Um, it's because I know that the macroeconomic setting is very important for how our economy will move forward. But the combination of all our micro decisions really will matter a lot, especially moving forward when we're not just fighting, uh, you know, AI, nanjan, huge poverty, inequality. Uh, we have to make all of these things uh, opportunities for us to get to have better wealth and have a bigger slice of the pie. But also at the same time, I hope Carlo and everybody else in the panel, well, let's also talk about how to make AI our friend, no? So that we can help the bottom of the pyramid. I'm very, very excited for how this conversation will move uh, going forward in the next hour or so. Thank you, Ruri. Thank you, Salve. Akala ko pa naman, you know, we were going to, I was going to say sorry for saying how old you were, but <laughs> you uh, revealed yourself. Okay. <laughs> Batang matanda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we've known each other a long time. Before we begin our discussion, we'd like to know your thoughts, um, the panelists, on uh, what Secretary Benjamin Jokno covered um, during uh, his uh, brief discussion. So what do you have to say about um, what Secretary Jokno talked about, about uh, his plans? Uh, and his priorities. Let's begin with Carlo. Carlo, what do you think about um, Secretary Jokna's plans and uh, his priorities? I mean, the Secretary and the President's new plans, especially around the eight-point uh, eight economic plan that they announced yesterday, and he alluded to in the, in the message, really impressive. You know, I think um, it's all music to my ears. If I, if I look at the data for um, MSMEs in the Philippines and how many people they employ. So for just say that there's about a million MSMEs in the Philippines, they employ about eight and a half people each. There's no better way to financial inclusion than giving people financial power, giving them money to, to, do, to do a job. So if you just do plain math, this isn't even hard algebra or calculus, just arithmetic. More uh, MSMEs, more entrepreneurs means more people employed and uh, hopefully uh, the plan works. Thank you, Carla. Hannah, what about you? So what uh, what I like about um, what he what he said po kasi talaga is about yung sa um, technology and parang nire recognize po nila yung digitization po talaga ng uh, mga payments and all. So parang um, yun po, we're actually looking forward to it na kasi we're actually using uh, kahit po small business kami like we're only a food cart business. Um, halos lahat po ng transactions namin are done online. So we're very excited po talaga. I think you're hardly just a food cart business. <laughs> Abby, what about you? See, um, being a banker, we've worked with uh, the VSP and also with uh, Secretary Jokna. No? And I'm happy to see that the plans have been um, sustainable, meaning... The, the plans before has carried over and carried out, no? But um, what I noticed about his, um, uh, his, his, the plans there is that it has something for the MSME sector, the consumers, the investors, and I think it's really very aggressive, but some of it I've already seen uh, in the works. Uh, and also, of course, uh, there's also something for the lenders and the bankers, the financing companies like us. So what caught me also is the, um, he said that 70%, the, the goal is that 70% of Filipinos will, will be in the formal no, banking or uh, formal uh, sector by 2023, meaning maybe, maybe they will already have bank accounts, maybe have um, digital footprint. And that's really what, one of the things that matters to lenders so that we can see the information and make you know correct decisions. So excited to work further with, um, uh, especially with the BSP. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Jovi, what about you? Yes, so, um, so quick reaction lang to what my former boss <laughs> uh, has mentioned earlier. No? So I think what's really important no, is uh, makikita natin um, yung approach ngayon or in, in the past years uh, na nakatulong din during the 
COVID-19 pandemic was that um, it's really a whole of nation approach, meaning to say, um, ano siya, um, consorted effort siya ng, ng um, lahat ng mga government agencies as well as our um, private sector partners. No? Kasi it cannot be done by a single institution alone. So for the um, support naman ng BSP, I think this was also highlighted by um, Secretary Jokno, yung importance of having the FCTE and establishing trust in the digital economy. Um, kasi uh, admittedly, no, while we've seen a lot of shift, increase, uh, increasing shift sa digital uh, financial services, um, as, as pointed out um, a couple of times na dahil nga siya sa pandemic. No? But um, kumbaga nandun pa rin kasi yung ingrained na uh, nature natin, eh, which is really cash heavy. So yung shift na yon, I think um, kahit drastic siya uh, in, in the past two years or so, um, meron, pa rin siyang, meron pa rin tayong kailangan i-address in terms More, in a more frequent um, uh, occurrence, no, um, we also have to be more of course, apart from um, providing or having the, the right infrastructure as highlighted by uh, Secretary Jok, no, so Kasama nga. I think that that is uh, part of what's holding back the fintech. Uh, the head of the NBI Cybercrime Division and they're saying talaga sobrang dami ng nagre-report maybe um, more proactive ano, no? uh, financial education campaign on that kasi hindi natin maiwasan na everybody's online But I also have to say that 15 years before Secretary Jokno, everything has been moving internally so that he will be able to give that pro The banking industry had to uh, come together to really talk about all of these issues para the likes of Hana will be able to do her business digitally end to end. Of course, in the perfect, and I think that's why we're here to talk about Um, whether the digitalization is the choice, whether moving and that a certain group trusts it and a matter of getting more people to trust it. All right, thank you for those answers. Abby, please take it away. Hey, um, hi. So I really love the 
kwentuhan tayo pa, informal. Uh, <laughs> couldn't see it at this point. Um, um, on the financing side, right? So we would finance for um, small businesses or individuals, no, but uh, I really like to uh, be an entrepreneur despite being in the um, in the in the corporate and lending sector so uh, let's just go back to the basic but um should I continue or is there a break? No, just continue. All right. All right. So. Uh, the advocacy of Salve and also myself and a lot more. So pitch in if you want. Five important words to remember in personal and business finance. And I think everyone knows this. You know, it's your, your income. Sales of your business, additional capital, and also proceeds from loans. Um, and financing is meant really to being um a lending of financing and a bank no, is the high risk cost and this risk cost is the cost of defaulting in payments um and the banks lose a lot Because uh, because we don't have that very uh, well-oiled um, so this is the struggle for us. Um, and if I look at it, let's look further at. Um, the default issue. But of course, lo loss of source of income due to, I don't know, unemployment, underemployment. Number two here is overextended loans, meaning if you don't track your borrowing, And these are the causes that um, lead people to default or not pay. Your cash flow doesn't come in. Number two, when you over leverage, again, when you don't track budget, when you borrow.
Um, actually, in the past, well, maybe until now because COVID happened, 60% of all bankruptcies for small businesses is due to There is disruption in cash flow plus continuing expenses. Then there is income loss and then you default on the loans. And again, as I mentioned earlier, one of the lifeblood of during the pandemic. So it's... um. Low consumer demand, which means diminished income. So the MSMEs need what? Access to credit. It's really access to financing facilities, access to working capital. Number two, loan deferment. me is um, going back, we still feel the reels of it. No? Parang, we just turned out of the corner. Eh? Hindi pa talaga out of the woods. Eh? So, deferments or restructuring. We were cut off a while back. So we do not have a feed right now. Back to that, because All right. uh, we don't want them to to miss that. Okay, so. Um, but um, yeah, apparently they couldn't hear you at all. So um, I've been told that you were cut off. So we're going to go to a uh, technical problem slide right now. Parang nakat. It's literally um, after the first slide. So when you started going. Yes. Can I just. We will show it. We will. We'll Actually, the problem is a complete breakdown of the feed. So um, we will.
And uh, unfortunately, that just uh, we lost you there for a second, but we're glad that you stuck around. And uh, we're glad that second slide.
Is it correct? Is it work? Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Talking already about, you know, the issues that our um, small, uh, our, especially yeah. our micro. loss of income, um, overextended loans, and the crisis. If you go to the next slide, uh, this, this is also what we've noticed to, with our slide. Yeah, it will show that, you know, the behavior, if there is loss of income, um, continuing expenses. That um, these are the top three challenges no, of MSMEs. supply chain which is still happening now and of course lack of financing so it financing always comes up things that um the are the entrepreneurs and small businesses would need uh, next slide please So again, actually, a lot of people have benefited from it. <clears throat> this, were, this was uh, during the implementation of Bayanihan 1 and 2. Uh, there were loan deferments, loan risk. to bring a rebound to our uh, to this to, to the MSME sector to tackle on you know the practical points and I call this um, the triple B so this is Under, you know, that my triple B. Number one is to you know build a credit worthy footprint. Uh, you know, not only credit worthy. Hindi natin nakikita yung kabuuan, right? Because uh, when when small businesses apply for loans, um, there is no basis. There is no verifiable basis. In ngayon, okay. 
although hindi pa ganun talaga because um, we still have to work a lot and I think one of digital footprint or something that can be retrieved and, and checked on. So that's one of the, the first budget is very important. Um, even if even as you start a small business, it's really important to mind your books and to 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 list. Done. And budgeting guards you against over borrowing or over leveraging. Um, there are several uh, uh, digital and bookkeeping free. You know, to borrow, but within your means. This is what I call really intentional borrowing. You plan. Each other here. You know? Because as I mentioned earlier, the reason for institutions um, not being very open And this can also be um, included as one of the, you know, a good credit footprint for, for future references. Will be more than your borrowing cost. than the cost of borrowing, right? So again, protect your credit. First, do not run away from them because uh, it will have give you more trouble. <laughs> of funds. Next slide, please. And this is where the government comes in and really um, helps our, our uh, where MSMEs can borrow at uh, really affordable rates. And lastly, the credit rate fund. So this is um, in cooperation with the VSP. Uh, it, parang it, it guarantees 80% of the loan. So these are the um, other funds and other suggestions. But um, I think this is my second to the last slide. And now uh, the, the sector has been um, in dire patch since the join hands no? and 
try to push to the rebound this sector because it will really help Abby, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, as uh, um, delayed as it was, uh, it was very informative. Uh, stay tuned for more and we'll be right back. The Philippine Daily Inquirer would like to thank the following sponsors for making this live stream event. Vito Puede Union Bank It's all in you. We'd also like to acknowledge And welcome back. Now we have questions. Allocation work in the past. How do we increase the allocation moving forward? Sean. Um, so since the start of the pandemic, um, I think uh, this is expected na um, since karamihan nga nasa loob lang ng bahay no, na lockdown. So um, from, from the data that uh, we have, um, So we're actually hoping to uh, for, for this MSME loan allocation to uh, recover and increase. And not only with um, lending institutions other than the banks. So we're also seeing a lot of... Um, um, we're hoping for, for uh, an uptick in MSME loans. Requirements, especially for MSMEs, because I think this is also one of the pain points. to turn to formal lenders no um we B. what new innovations are currently available for msmes and uh, what new innovations do you see coming in the future
the aside from what uh, uh, Joey mentioned about you know streamlining the MSME application. Um, it says open banking, open and unlock um, data, of course, with the consent of the, the consumer or the, the owner of the data, such that right now data is siloed. As I mentioned earlier, diba, uh, there's all this data And I am excited about. Thank you, Abby. Uh, for Hannah, Mr. Find so work go just to start my own business before. Um, uh, walang mga seminars like this. Um, aside from that, syempre, yung mahirap is uh, if you don't have the capital for the business. But I was lucky enough because yun, nakahiram din ako sa mom ko. Uh, talagang medyo mahirap before compared now. So, yun po. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, for Carlo, how can we make uh, technology affordable to MSMEs? That is to compete with the, with them on price, right? So if you think of a tool that you want to use, like let's say Salesforce. You just put in whatever tool you're looking for that you don't want to pay for. I do this all the time, right? Like startups are also a small business. Um, for a lot of it's free. So it's looking for the best option at your price range. Yep. All right, that's a good answer. Um, for Salve, well, Rui, I think very easy for us to think na madali lang ma dapat na isip na natin lahat yun. But you as an owner should have your own salary. Pag walang salary, salary yung owner. Talag Set it so that it will allow your business to be sustainable. If you don't follow it strictly, ito talaga nakita ko. In all sustainable, so not eat your inventory. But moving forward, as you scale up, there's a nice system that uh, I've learned from a lot of the billionaires. pag nagsiscale up ka na, don't hire employees na sobrang taas ng sweldo para hindi ka nauubusan and then you end up nga cannibalizing your business. Instead, 20% of what you're
and your 60% of net income, you reinvest in the business. This Um, and what Hannah said earlier, many MSMEs uh, do not know how ng loob ko. Sorry magbabenta ko, no? Kasi lagi kong nakakausap mga bankero, central bank, kanyan. For the longest I don't know if you uh, if you know this. A lot of people tried NASA DTI mentoring uh, ecosystem. Think I don't know if you agree with me. There are online lending agencies that are there, but they give very quickly five minutes. Nanja na yon three thousand to ten thousand pesos, but. for good terms and they even offer mentoring diba ang galing so kailangan lang talaga more financial education campaign so that our people have access to this information you keep saying meron pang sort of helping you to get better in your line of business right There, but it's hard to pull out information from this credit database. This was supposed to improve the way the alternative data to allow the smaller players to have access to financing. I think the BSP is also very supportive in that. Thank you. Even if they account for a bulk, the bulk of the enterprises in the country. Nice segue uh, to the venting of Simon. <laughs> <laughs> asking for verifiable documents. And that's the reason why na parang, bakit three years? Bakit, <laughs> bakit tayo humihingi? So, there are alternative ways. I think that's really coming in as a game changer. So in the future, we also so really, like we partner with telco score, the telco uh, companies who create score. Normally, him, merong ka agad, for example, uh, um, services. and pull the data. Another thing is, let's say, um, uh, uh, 
all this connected and it makes it easier for borrowers, for lenders. I can give you a lot of more examples. Um, to